Hey guys, Eric here and welcome to another video. In front of me there's a giant box, I can barely see out from behind it. Uh, this is the Bluer Plus from Two Trees. They are, were nice enough to send over this 3D printer for me to take a look at it. So uh, how about instead of rambling for a long time we get straight into it and open this up. Before we move on, a quick word from this video sponsor, CD Key Deals. They offer a wide variety of different CD keys for things like games, Windows licenses, Microsoft Office, or many, many more. I use quite a few Windows licenses uh, as I like to build computers for people, and I don't like to pay over 100 bucks. Partners like Dell pay a lot less, and thanks to CD key deals, you can also pay a lot less. And by using code DBD20, you can get an additional 20% off, bringing the total down to just $17.57, which is a great deal. After you've placed your order, you can simply copy the Windows activation code out of their interface, paste it into Windows under opt-in security, activation, and enter your code there, click next, and activate, and there you go. You have now activated Windows and enjoy all the benefits of having personalization and no more watermarks. And now, back to the video. Now, full disclosure, two trees did send this over to me, but they did not in any way pay me for uh, my opinion, so this will be 100% my opinion about this machine. With the Blu-ray Plus, uh, two trees is entering in what I think is a really interesting space for 3D printers at the moment. Uh, it's a bit above the just bare minimum entry, but it still is very affordable, but gives you a lot of extra convenience and features that should make your life a lot easier. Like, for example, this 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build volume is just great. You can fit just about any print you would want on there, or if it is actually too big for this print volume, you'll probably want to split it up anyhow, because it will take multiple days. Also, it has a beautiful, uh, fairly large touchscreen here that is very responsive and very intuitive to use. A huge improvement over the old... Uh, clicky wheel and uh, single line text menus. Also has a easy removable uh, spring steel uh, build plate that makes taking prints on and off a breeze. It also supports automatic bed leveling which is really nice. Uh, now the way it works is that uh, on every print it doesn't uh, do the whole mesh bed leveling, it just kind of probes the bed uh, at one point in the center. But in the menu you can tell it to do the mesh bed leveling and then it will uh, probe 16 points all over the build plate and save that configuration. And since that's not really something that changes all the time, I think it's a good idea to not have that in the front of every print as that does add a couple of minutes. And especially with such a large build plate and the not super fast uh, kind of BL touch style uh, probe. Uh, this is a very good compromise, and the first layers have been extremely consistent for me. It also has a very wide spread here on the bed, which is quite nice. This makes for a very sturdy uh, bed platform, uh, and you still get these uh, little adjustment wheels for uh, the bed, but to be honest, I haven't touched these once, but I guess it's just kind of a staple by now for this style of printer to have these uh, wheels to adjust it. Other than that, it's a very, very sturdy and heavy steel sheet metal uh, construction base uh, that gives it a very strong feeling. Also, the cable here at the back is nicely strain relieved and feels sturdy. On the side, it's using some RJ45 connectors, uh, but all the cables are very neatly routed and there's no problem here at all. Of course, you also get dual Z-axis motors on the back. Uh, 
at this size, I uh, really would not recommend going with a machine that has just one. And they are coupled on the top with a belt to make sure that they uh, go nicely synchronized. The extruder on this machine is a Bolton style, uh, which is a slight bummer. You can see that it feeds back here and uh, has kind of a um, Bontech uh, inspired extruder back here. But I will say a bit more about this extruder for later. Small hint, it's not all good. Next to the extruder we also have a filament sensor which is quite nice, uh, works as you'd expect. And feeding up to the top, uh, this is a spool holder. The stock spool holder is good, except if you have very wide uh, 3D printer rolls, uh, for me that was one out of all of mine, then the stock holder might be too small and you want to print one that is slightly larger, but that's a one and a half hour print, so no big deal at all. You also have a dual cooling fans here on either side. Now they both are not super strong, but because they are from both sides you get very even cooling and I haven't had really any uh, cooling issues with this printer, so that's quite nice. The extruder itself has kind of like a vo volcano uh, sized uh, melt zone at it, uh, which should allow for fast enough melting of your filament even at quicker printing speeds. What is also very nice is that all the stepper motors are using very good uh, quiet drivers, so the noise from the motors moving around is very good. And I actually had very little vibrations. This is one of the only printers where I did not print anti-vibration feet, as I just didn't really have that problem with it. Part of it might be that it's a very heavy base, uh, combined with good stepper drivers, that's good. But not all is good on the sound front. While the stepper motors are very quiet, the fan for the power supply and the electronics cabinet is not. This printer sounds exactly the same the moment you turn it on and at full printing tilt. It's just the same sound level all throughout. I'll quickly turn it on for you so you can have a comparison between the loudness of my voice and the printer. The, the clicking that you heard, uh, that was the touch probe uh, going up and down and, and initializing. That's perfectly normal. But as you can hear, this is not a quiet printer. Now it's not horrible. Uh, you get used to the sound and uh, since there is no like loud printing sounds, uh, it is a fairly static background noise. But still, this puts it as one of my louder printers. However, I imagine this is a relatively easy fix. You can probably uh, replace the fan, maybe open it up a bit, uh, put a Noctua fan in there, and you'll have a very quiet printer. But sadly, this is not the only issue I have with this printer. Let's first start, start off with some smaller nitpicky stuff that can easily be disregarded, but I still want to mention. For one, it's using a micro SD card here at the side, uh, which it's not my preferred method. Uh, they're super fiddly, they break easy, the ports are easy to damage. Uh, I would have much rather had like a USB port here in the front where you can put a USB stick in. That is definitely by far the easiest way to get files on and off. But that's not a big deal. No, I completely forgot about it because this is not a feature that uh, is very important to me. The, it also has Wi-Fi integrated. Now I just tried once uh, to click on it to get it configured. It didn't immediately work, but I also did not put any more effort into trying to get it to work. Uh, my Wi-Fi configuration here is a bit uh, not usual, so I completely forgive the machine if it uh, didn't quite figure it out right away. Uh, but if Wi-Fi is a functionality that you're interested in, that might be one feature you like. Some other nitpicky stuff is that the temperature control for the heat bed has its reporting not really accurately. Uh, when I set the heat bed to 50 degrees, uh, it was pretty accurately all around the heat bed very evenly, which is good, but at around 60 degrees. And at 40 degrees set temperature is, is around 50 degrees. So I just basically deducted 10 degrees from my desired temperature and set that as the set value. So not a big deal, but just something to keep in mind that the reported temperature is not necessarily the actual temperature of it. However, I much rather have an evenly heated heat bed than one that uh, is the correct temperature. And speaking of the heat bed, it also doesn't heat up all that quickly. 
Now it's not a big deal, it's not super slow, I've had printers that were much slower, but uh, compared to something like the Sidewinder, it does take quite a bit longer. And last small gripe, uh, maybe already mentioned in an assembly, is that uh, the Bowden tube here, uh, as it came with the printer, was very long. Uh, like, I cut off at least like 10-15 centimeters of it, uh, as the shorter your Bowden tube, the better. But even that did not really help this extruder here. Now, I'm not 100% sure what part of it failed me, but I did not have a good time with this extruder. Now, some parts of it are great. It's a uh, dual uh, teeth engagement, uh, like uh, it has like a little gear and then both sides of the filament are fed uh, with very sharp teeth, so there's a lot of grip and uh, unless something is seriously blocked, it will be able to pull in the filament. But as soon as you, I don't know, have a knot in your filament and it just cannot possibly pull it in, which is not the extruder's fault, it starts grinding away and all these teeth fill up. However, because it is all enclosed, you do not see that and there's no real way for it to fall off. Now it is slightly translucent, but it's like translucent enough to look transparent, but not translucent enough for you to be able to actually see anything inside. So I had uh, my filament uh, get jammed up uh, at the spool once and while well, that was not a printer's fault, uh, afterwards uh, the teeth were completely clogged and I had to completely disassemble it to uh, get all the teeth cleaned out again. They also have very very aggressive teeth so uh, it actually it took like a needle to, for me to uh, pry out all of uh, the filament. Now this is a double-edged sword, on the one hand that means it's driving really securely, on the other hand that means if you have some other issue that causes it to grind the filament, you'll probably be taking it apart. And on that note I also had uh, one of the drive gears uh, come loose on the shaft, uh, which resulted in some really weird uh, ghosting under extrusion, but uh, that's something that I think could happen on any uh, printer and was easily fixed by just tightening that again. But the reason why it took me so long to find out about this issue is because you really cannot see inside. On just about every other printer that I've had before, you were able to kind of get a glimpse at the extruder gears working and uh, well, there is our benefits for it being fully enclosed, like nothing can get in the way, nothing can get jammed in it. Also, if something gets internally jammed, you don't see it, you cannot easily get to it, which makes troubleshooting a little bit harder. And to make matters worse, retractions on this printer were absolutely horrible. Now, stock, uh, it was completely unusable. Like, there were so many strings, like, any retraction would just be horrible. And then I kind of increased it and got the settings a bit better, and it is quite decent and usable, but I'm using huge retraction values, like something like 8 millimeters, and that takes a long while, uh, but still there is quite a bit of stringing that is involved. Now it is at a level where I can call it okay, you can just remove that after the print, uh, not a huge deal, but it is something to keep in mind. Well, prints like this vase here, where there's no retractions, it printed just beautifully. Like, this vase is super smooth, uh, very tall, and just amazing. Uh, like, one of the nicest vases I have printed. However, if you do not have such a, uh, like, continuous thing that is printing, there are some more uh, problems. Like, on this Pikachu, like, everything printed very nicely until it got to, like, the ears where there were more retractions. So there, all of a sudden, there's more stringing, and I noticed that if there's a lot of retractions, it also sometimes has some under extrusion issues. Now it's not very regular and sometimes it works perfect and other times it creates problems. And this results in some prints turning out like this, but quite a few prints also like turning out like this. Like this Pikachu, perfect until here and then it just fell apart. Like there was a bunch of retraction issues, under extrusion, uh, the ears fell off. I then heated it up again, uh, tried extruding, there was no problem anymore, so it wasn't like a clock nozzle or anything. Not 100% sure what the problem here was. Same with this uh, printer test, it printed nicely, beautifully, and then at some point it just fell apart and uh, everything after that uh, turned to spaghetti. 
Now this one managed to complete, but there are a couple lines uh, in between where there was just not enough extrusion. Now this is something that was a bit more time invested into troubleshooting and maybe uh, upgrading the extruder can be fixed. So it's not saying that uh, this printer is completely unusable uh, if you want to do retractions at all. It's just saying that it does need some work. Now there is also the possibility that it's just a fluke and it's just my unit, but from what I've read online uh, there are also other people having uh, some issues uh, where out of the box uh, it does have some problems. And while we're at the topic of uh, print quality, looking at this Benchy, now let's ignore the stringing for now uh, as I've already mentioned that uh, it's quite good, like the sides are very smooth, uh, thanks to the dual uh, fans here uh, there's no curling uh, at the front of the boat uh, so there's adequate cooling, also the little uh, tower in the end turned out great and uh, all around pretty decent Denji. However one thing that's also happened with this Denji is it took two and a half hours and now I'm not trying to win any speedboat race uh, competitions here and I probably also have slightly slower settings. Uh, this is printed at 0.15mm layer height. Uh, but this is quite slow and it is a lot slower than the Cura estimate uh, using the provided profile. Now that is something that was true very consistently. Uh, the printer would take about 50% longer uh, than the estimate inside of Cura. Now we did not uh, compare that to uh, other print settings, uh, maybe it's just the settings that are uh, not quite configured correctly, uh, I'm using the default accelerations, uh, but it is something to keep in mind that prints will take longer than the estimate. And that is something that can be said in general, even after bumping up the print speeds quite a bit from the default profile, it was very conservative in speeds, and bumping up these speeds I did not see any quality degradement, uh, it still is not a quick printer. I'm assuming it's just the kind of default acceleration settings and everything combined with that it has to do a lot of retracts uh, very far that are kind of slow uh, does not make this the speediest printer out there. So conclusion time. Is this printer horrible? Wouldn't say so. Does this printer need a bit of work to get it to its optimal performance? Yes, for sure. Uh, you will spend some time tuning the profile, uh, the one that is included uh, works, gives you a starting baseline, but is not perfect. However, one thing that is also to consider is that this printer does not exist in a vacuum. It's not the only printer of its kind, and getting the first look at it, I had major flashbacks to my uh, Sidewinder, which I reviewed uh, a while ago, link down the description below. And looking at the current pricing, this does not look particularly good for the Bluer Plus. Uh, as of filming this video, uh, this machine can be had for around $450, uh, while the Sidewinder is only at around $400. Now, the Sidewinder itself is not perfect either. Uh, I've been printing a lot with it and I had to replace uh, the like lever for the extruder. It broke fairly soon and I replaced it with a metal uh, replacement part that you can easily buy online. Uh, I had to add some uh, bracing for the cables in the back that might be fixed with the new versions but I had uh, the ca cables break internally because they were not properly stress released. It also does not have automatic uh, bed leveling or Wi-Fi and the screen is a bit smaller and not quite as responsive as on the Bluer Plus. But it did give me significantly better results right off the printer and it is a direct drive extruder which uh, after seeing how this uh, Bowden setup performed is definitely a huge plus. Retraction settings on uh, the Sidewinder are like a fraction of what they have to be on this machine. So I guess what it really boils down to is uh, how much are you willing to uh, invest into the printer in terms of time and what are different features worth to you. Now it's very possible that in the future the price of this printer will drop as well. I mean the Sidewinder has been out for a few years by now so it has a lot of time for the price to kind of settle down a bit. So if this printer drops down at the same price or below the Sidewinder then it might be a compelling option if you're willing to tinker a bit with it. However as it stands I could not really recommend it. And with that said we are at the end of this video. If you liked it, please leave a like down below. Also consider subscribing so you don't miss any future content like this. 
And if you have any more questions about this machine, how it compares to the other ones, or anything like that, leave them down in the comment section, I'll gladly hear from you. So that's it for me, thanks for watching and until next time.